hello and welcome. Uh, my name is Jason Todd and I'm a university uh, educator at Oxford University and today I'm going to be talking to Miranda Kaufman, the author of Black Tudors. So Miranda, welcome. Uh, tell us who you are and what got you into history. Hello, I'm uh, Dr. Miranda Kaufman. I'm a senior research fellow at the Institute of Commonwealth Studies, part of the University of London. And I've been kind of obsessed with history as long as I can remember. Um, I, my parents, you know, always took me to museums and historical sites. I love castles and old houses. And uh, I also used to watch a lot of swashbuckling films with my dad. Um, I got quite obsessed with Errol Flynn's Robin Hood. And, uh, you know, it just takes you into all these amazing historical stories. And I guess my love has grown since then. And I did have quite a few wonderful history teachers at school that fanned the flames of my enthusiasm. Excellent. And I hope that some of the young people watching this will also have similarly engaged. Uh, we're here to talk about Black Tudors, uh, a book that you wrote. And, and I suppose my first question is, you know, tell us a little bit about why you wrote this book. Well, I think that people often say, you know, I wrote the book that I wanted to read, but it wasn't there on the library shelf. Um, and I, I, I first learned that there were Africans in Tudor England um, as an undergraduate in my last year when I was trying to figure out what to do for my doctoral study. And I was in a lecture and they just suddenly mentioned that uh, there were Tudors were trading to Africa in the middle of the 16th century, which is 200 years earlier than I had previously thought based on the only thing I'd learned about it was some discussion of the trafficking of enslaved Africans in the 18th century across the Atlantic. And so I went to the library to find out more. And then I quite quickly found this, uh, these references to Africans in Elizabethan England, but they were quite fleeting. And I was like, well, I need to know more. There must be more information about this. Uh, and that's where I found the uh, Black and Asian Studies Association and Marika Sherwood, who has been pioneer in this field, um, sent me some references that she'd found from this period and uh, you know and I was able then to sort of follow up the uh, the detective hunt from there um, and, and and you know while I was doing my research I became aware of other researchers in the field and over the last 15 years you know, so much more material has been published on this um, notably by uh, Professor Imtiaz Habib and Dr Onye Nubia. Uh, but what I really wanted to do is make sure that everybody knew this history. And that's why I chose to write a popular history book aimed at everybody um, and talk about the lives of sort of 10 individuals who I thought have the most interesting lives that we know the most about to really, you know, make it personal and draw people into those stories. Brilliant. And I mean, clearly there's, yeah, your own ideas about what, what was going on at the time in terms of, yeah, African lives in, in the United Kingdom and that, that sort of suggests a certain set of questions that you wanted to ask once you were stimulated by these references that Marika sent you these about so if you could just first of all just tell us a little bit about the types of questions you are asking of the evidence if you like. Well I think one of the first things was to establish how many Africans were in, in Tudor and I actually looked at early Stuart uh, Britain as well. Um, I went up to 1640 in my research, which is just up to when the British Civil Wars break out. Although, you know, the evidence that's been found so far is no, by no means the, f the whole story. There may well be much more, and more evidence is emerging all the time. Uh, but I, so I wanted to have a sense of how many Africans were in England and Scotland in this period and where they were living uh, and what they were doing, how, what their lives were like. Uh, what what religion did they practice? Who were they marrying? How were they being treated by the authorities, the religious authorities, the legal authorities? Uh, but I think a really burning question was, were they enslaved? Because almost so often when I told people that I was looking into the lives of Africans in Tudor England, like once they got over their surprise that there were any, uh, the next question was, the next thing that people said was, oh right, you mean slaves. And increasingly, I became quite clear in my mind that that is not what I meant, and that wasn't what this experience was. And that you know, only um, only um, increased my desire to sort of tell this story to the world. Excellent. And my final question then is just simply, having asked those questions and then embarked on your inquiry, what sort of claims do you feel you were able to make based on you know, your investigations? 
Well, the claims I make in my book are that there were, uh, well, I found evidence of uh, over 200 Africans in Tudor England and another 160 or so up to the civil wars. And I found that they were living across England in a much sort of wider variety of roles than had previously been thought. Um, so people knew about Africans, musicians and, and servants at the royal courts and sometimes in the households of aristocrats. But the evidence uh, actually shows that they were living in merchants' houses, in sort of quite humble households of a seamstress or a beer brewer, uh, as well as living their own independent lives, in some cases, craftsmen. Uh, or sailors uh, and and so it's a much sort of broader story and Af and these Africans um, I, you know one of the big claims I make is that they were not enslaved mm -hmm. but furthermore they were uh, actively following their own interests and pursuing uh, their own their own lives um, in quite a wide variety of interesting roles um, with you know we know about a salvage diver on the wreck of the Mary Rose. Uh, we know about a black trumpeter who petitioned Henry VIII for a pay increase successfully. Uh, and there's, an in, there's a silk weaver, there's independent people living in the countryside. There's, there's so many fascinating stories. And I suppose the last claim is that this isn't just some sort of niche subject. This really changes how we view Tudor England. But I think so often, the narrative of Tudor England becomes quite insular um, and very kind of European. You know, we, we hear about the rivalry of Spain, we hear about the Reformation, we hear a lot about the intimate politics of the Tudor court, uh, but it's as if the world doesn't exist beyond Europe in those narratives. And um, the presence of Africans in England raises so many questions straight away that have to take you um, south of the equator and across the Atlantic. Brilliant. So, I mean, it's a really good way of not just understanding the place and position of Black Africans in British society, but also how Britain is connected to the rest of the world at this particular historical moment.